All right, we're live. Oh, perfect. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name's Jennifer Bogle, and um, I'm actually going to share my screen here with you guys because I have a presentation um, for uh, character goals. And let's see, Crystal. Oh, there we go. It is sharing. All righty. Okay. So, um, can everybody see my screen? I am not seeing your screen right you now. You are not seeing my screen. Uh oh. Um, hold yes. on. Now it's not letting me. Oh, we're going to go through the whole thing. And um, let's try this again. Um, You know, Crystal, I'm not seeing where it's letting me share my screen. Okay, so at the very bottom, is you're seeing the little button that says share screen? No, I don't. I have, uh, at the bottom, I have mute, stop video, participants, chat. Oh, there we go. Share screen. Thank you. Now I have it. Now I have it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, can you see the screen now or am I? Yeah, I'm still not seeing anything. You're still not seeing anything. Okay, let's stop this. Let's. Okay. Um, Okay, let's try share screen again. Okay, now I'm clicking on it. it's not giving me any options. Um, okay, let's try this. Oh, there we go. Okay, you see all my emails? <laughs> Yes, we have your emails now. <laughs> we saw my emails. Okay, good. And there's my email for getting on. Okay. Can everybody see this now? Character goals? Yes. Okay, we're good. I see some yeah. nodding. Awesome. And I see a thumbs up. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, good morning. Yay. <laughs> now we're set. Um, again, my name's Jennifer Bokel. We're going to do um, character goals. So, um, I welcome you. We're going to stop a couple of times during this presentation. And if you have questions, you like at that point, if you want to unmute yourself and ask. Also, if you want to use the chat when we stop, Crystal said she would be willing to read those questions. So we'll go ahead and get started. But, um, you know, if you do have a question, you can unmute yourself and just, you know, ask because I don't want anybody to be lost. Okay. So this is our agenda. We're gonna do an introduction, uh, character types, get to know your character, a questionnaire, character goal development and citing incident, examples of a character and goal. And then the last little bit, if we have some time, I will be happy to answer any questions. Okay, so here's a little bit about me. Um, I actually, here I have this. This is my 13th book, which is kind of surreal. I think all of you, like if, if you guys are, you know, aspiring writers or like newly starting to get published, you sort of think like, wouldn't it be awesome if, and um, when my 10th book came out, it was a bit, it was truly surreal. Cause I'm like, oh wait, maybe I do know what I'm doing. Maybe I, I have stories to tell and it's more than one or two. Um, but I do write romance. I started off writing ro uh, historic romance. I wrote um, gladiator, uh, ancient world historicals. I got into writing romantic suspense for Harlequin and that's kind of where I've stayed for the past couple of years. And that's where most of my books have been released. Um, so I had a, I guess my 12th book came out the, earlier this month. I have another book in November. So, um, and this truly is part of how I, I work. 
Um, and I hope that this works for you. I hope that this helps you um, as you're like developing your own, um, not style, but process. And, um, and hey, if you hear all the, everything I have to say and you're like, that doesn't work for me, then that's perfect and you don't have to waste your time, you know, trying to figure it out. Okay, so um, when we're done, I want you to have hopefully a little bit of time to have worked on your own personal goal statement for a single character, as well as having the, um, the tools to create your own goal statement as you move forward. Okay, let's start with this. So every book out there, you guys are writers, right? So you start with, um, hey, what if? My very first book, again, that was published with um, Montlake, which is Amazon Publishing's romance imprint, I started off with a what if of, what if a gladiator fell in love with a patrician woman? What would that look like? And, um, and then that, from that what if, I kind of spun a little bit of a story, but that what if doesn't, doesn't completely carry you through. You need to have your characters want something. And I am a romance writer, and I think one mistake new romance writers make is the, the characters want to fall in love or they want the other person. And you can't have that, really. That's not enough to carry a, a book through even a short story. So your character has to want something and that's their goal. And the nice thing about the goal is, um, or they have to need something, is the, the story then becomes, how does your character achieve that goal? So for my um, hero in my gladiator book, his goal was to gain his freedom. So like that's obviously a goal and you can tell if that goal has been achieved. Um, okay, and I kind of went over this uh, a little bit. So why do characters need a goal? It gives the characters action, direction, and purpose. It's so the, the reader knows when they're reading the book, like why, why did he do that? Oh, it's in support of him reaching his goal. You as the writer, this is why I love it, is, um, it keeps you focused on what is my story, right? Because you'll have like some great little ideas along the way, like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe we should throw in a bank robbery here, which is exciting and dramatic. And, um, but what, like, what, do, what does the bank robbery serve for the character's goal if the, um, character if you're writing a mystery and the character is a police officer and his goal is to discover who's robbing these banks obviously throw in a bank robbery but if, it, if your character's goal is to um you know save the world from terrorists and then you you know you take this you know james bond s character out of the story and you start having them investigate this bank robbery, like that doesn't really serve the purpose for you as you write your story or plot your story. Okay, so what kind of characters need to have goals? You, um, for every book, your commercial fiction, so, um, so, or genre fiction, so mystery, science fiction, fantasy, uh, romance, inspirational genre fiction, horror and genre fiction. So for anybody who's, um, doing um, writing genre fiction, you're going to want to have a protagonist, which is your hero, your heroine, um, your main character, and then you're gonna wanna have an antagonist. And an antagonist doesn't necessarily have to be um, evil. The antagonist just needs to be in opposition to the protagonist. Your antagonist can definitely be evil, but your antagonist does not have to be evil. You could have, um, you know, one, one story that's pretty typical for, um, or trope that's kind of typical in um, romance is you have your big city developer kind of um, 
uh, a big city developer versus somebody who owns a, like the small bookstore. The, there was a Meg Ryan and um, Tom Hanks movie a few years ago, and he works for basically like in Barnes and Noble, and he's moving this big um, bookstore into the neighborhood that Meg Ryan runs her, you know, her little independent bookstore. And, um, and Tom Hanks is not necessarily a bad guy. He just, like his goal is to do his job and put this bookstore into this neighborhood. Meg's, Meg Ryan's goal is um, to make sure that her bookstore stays viable. And if you have this big kind of corporate run bookstore, she's gonna go out of business. So he is definitely her opposition. I, I think it's called You've Got Mail. Um, she's definitely, I would say she's definitely the main character and he's definitely the opposition. And, um, and then they do end up together. So it, it creates an interesting dynamic that they have different goals, but, um, or their goals are in opposition. And if you do write a romance or if you have a strong romantic suspense or a strong romantic element in your book, you are going to want your love interest to have their own goal. And if your book is like a sci-fi romance, you're, you're definitely, your, your two characters who are part of that love couple are definitely gonna wanna have their own goals. Okay, so protagonist, antagonist, love interest. Um, and again, like I said, the protagonist's goal in a romance cannot be to fall in love with the love interest or to win the protagonist's heart. Um, but, um, but like you can have like an enemies to love, rivals, uh, enemies or, or rivals to lovers kind of trope in there, um, which would be uh, the you've gone male kind of thing. Um, so let me ask, does anybody have any questions at this point? No, I see some shaking heads. Crystal, were there any questions in the chat? Not yet. Not yet, okay, perfect. Okay, and one thing, again, like I said, is um, you, writing romantic suspense, I have like, I have um, a Russian drug lord, uh, was um, the bad guy, the overarching bad guy in a series I wrote a couple of years ago. And um, he, he never saw himself as the bad guy. He saw himself as a businessman. He uh, had cancer and he was looking for treatment. Um, so he didn't think of himself as the bad guy. The series that is being released this year, it has a serial killer. The serial killer does not see themselves as the bad person. They uh, see themselves on a mission to rid the world of certain kinds of people, but they don't think that what they're doing is in any way wrong or, or evil. Um, even though I would say the way I wrote both of those characters, I, I hope to infuse a good bit of evil in what they did, but in their own mind, they were doing what they needed to do they weren't, um, you know, they weren't like twisting their mustache and, you know, tying the heroin onto the railroad track for no reason other than to let the, you know, the Canadian Mountie come and save her. Like they're, like they have a reason why they're doing what they're doing. And that's also one thing to keep in mind as you create goals for your characters. Like, why are they doing what they're doing? In fact, I'll tell you a little story. I turned in um, edits for a book that's coming out in April yesterday. It was a very, very long uh, process with this book because, and I real so I'm, I'm preaching to you know to you guys, but I, but these are even things I have to remind myself now, with this being, I guess the book will be like my 16th book that'll come out in April. Um, maybe not 14. I don't know. It, it's up there. Um, but I had not given my antagonist a strong enough, um, a strong enough goal 
they, they didn't have a strong goal. They didn't have strong motivation for why they were doing what they were doing. And, um, and again, the, the edits were due on um, Tuesday or edits were due on Friday. And on Tuesday, I'm looking at my book and I have very interesting scenes, but without that antagonist having a goal and a reason for why they were doing what they were doing, which with no goal, they didn't have a reason for why they were doing what they were doing. Like I just had, you know, a bunch of mayhem, but there was no, co but it wasn't a story. It was just, you know, bad things happening. And then the hero and heroine reacting to them. So uh, I, I had to do research into ways that, that my, my antagonist could have a goal, which luckily I figured it out. So, um, but it was a long few days from Tuesday to Friday when I finally turned in my manuscript. Okay, so we're going to start talking about character development. And if you don't have a pen and a piece of paper with you, now might be the time to grab it because I'm gonna give you a little bit of time for, um, for you to do some, uh, we're, we're, we have a little, uh, work that you guys can do um, on your own story. So characters are people, right? All people have a history that makes them unique. They have life experiences that shape their thoughts, their desires, their actions. Um, and it gives them a personality, which will show how they're going to act in certain situations. And this is sort of like if somebody came to you and said, hey, I'm going to throw your best friend a surprise birthday party. What do you think? You you know your best friend well enough. You know that like if they, if you throw them a surprise party, like they're either going to be the type of person who's going to be like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. I love you guys. This is fabulous. Or you're going to be like, no, you're going to like jump out and say surprise. And you're, that's like, you're going to throw them into some sort of anxiety. They're not going to be happy with that. They're like, you know, your best friend and, or your, you know, your spouse or your partner. And you know how they're going to react to that. And that's kind of how you want to know your character. So you know how they're going to react in certain situations. Um, so you do want to, before you start, you know, you have your aha moment and I'm going to write a story about gladiator, a gladiator hero and a patrician heroine. Um, so you have your aha, now who is my gladiator? I need to develop a personal history and that history for writers is called a backstory. So, um, and you, you do need to, to know like who they were. My, my gladiator hero, if I remember correctly, he, uh, he was born a, a freeman in Rome uh, although they were quite poor, and he signed in to a Ludus at a young age because he had a mother, a sister, there was not enough money for food for the mom and the sister, and he thought that being a gladiator would give him a trade to um, give himself, uh, and this happened in Rome, but give him a trade, and he, if he earned enough money, he could, you know, kind of support his mom and his sister. And so he sold himself to the Ludus or the gladiator school where he then became the champion of Rome. But um, so he had that backstory. And because that was his backstory, he was very uh, protective of his sister. So that kind of, when certain things started happening in the story, the sister, who's now like a young adult, he, he does certain things to protect her and keep her safe. But because I had that backstory and I had that backstory was very well set in my mind and then it came up dirt throughout the book when he, you know, reacts a certain way to what his sister has done. You're not like, oh, that's shocking. Um, so, and, and as this slide says, the most telling characteristic about your character is going to be their age, their gender, and the period in which they lived, right? So a 40-something-year-old woman who lives in upstate New York in 2020 and writes romantic suspense is definitely going to be look at things completely different than um, 
a privateer captain from England in um, 1692, right? A, a male, which is going to be completely different than a, um, a witch who happens to uh, live on uh, a human settlement on Mars in 2410. So like you're, you're going to have all sorts of, you know, different, you know, where, where you're, you're, how old your character is, the period they live, their age is going to be the most important thing to who they are, because that's going to be the thing that's going to um, influence them the most. And, um, but you can also think about their family, their e e uh, educational background, socioeconomic status, what they look like is going to be important. Um, so let's do a little character development. And this is where um, I'm going to give you guys, let's say five minutes, um, copy this list and see how many things from this list you maybe know about your character or anything that you, um, that you don't know, but could help you figure out who they are and what they, um, what they're gonna, how they're gonna react in the story that you're gonna put them in. Okay, Crystal, do we have any questions? No questions yet, um, but I'm about to send you a private message to make you sure you look at that while other people are doing their thing. Okay, sure, sure. And if anybody does have a question, um, let me know. Oops. Oh. Okay, there we go. Can everybody see that now? I'm I'm reading the the chats. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to do one more minute. Does anybody have any questions? No, okay. Okay, we're gonna go on. 
Okay, so next, um, goals give meaning to characters' actions. We're gonna start talking about what, what we want with the goals. Um, since you know your characters, maybe a little bit better. Um, so a goal is going to be something that characters are as striving to, excuse me, attain or defeat, especially for the, the protagonist, noble goals are best and goals should be measurable. And this, so this way the reader understands if the, uh, if the protagonist or antagonist is successful or not. And one thing, um, like I was a teacher many, many, many years ago. And when we had to do lesson plans, so like maybe this is why this makes sense to me, is with lesson plans, you want to have um, measurable goals for the kids, right? Like I taught kindergarten. So when they left kindergarten, were they, did they know their ABCs? Did they, um, could they tell time on an analog clock, different things like that. So those are measurable goals. And, um, and then you can say, you know, yes, I was able to, you know, teach these kids these things or no, we like, we didn't get to that or, you know, or, or, and it was also helpful to me because no, it wasn't like the kids were not getting how to, you know, how to read a clock or whatever. So, um, so keep that in mind also with your goals, because sometimes it is hard to figure out what measurable goals are. So here's, um, here's uh, some thoughts on uh, measurable goals, uh, win a race, um, get a job, save a housing development, abstract goals, which, you know, oftentimes, and here's, here's how you can tell if it's abstract or not, like be successful or find happiness, right? So my, my what I feel is gonna make me happy is not necessarily what um, you guys are, think is gonna make you happy. My definition of success is not your definition of success. My, like one of my personal goals is to be on the USA Today bestseller list. That's going to be something that makes me feel successful but so if if i want to be successful hitting the usa today bestseller list then becomes a measurable goal and um you can then tell if um and and the reason measurable goals are uh oh and noble goals are better because um the reader like that helps the reader turn or that helps the reader um especially American readers, like they're, you know, they want to have their hero be a hero, if that makes sense. Okay, so a goal in three steps. A goal should be measurable. Um, all characters, even the antagonist, um, should view their goal as noble. And for the protagonist, the reader should also view that goal as noble. And the third one, which we're going to start talking about now, the reader is, oops, um, the reader or all goals are going to have internal motivation. So you want an, a goal that has is measurable. So the readers can say, oh, this is why, um, or yes, the, the housing development was saved. Yes, the, um, the high school athlete came in first at the high school track meet. Um, you know, yes, the writer hit the USA Today bestseller list, how, whatever that is. Um, but you're going to have an internal motivation. And that internal motivation is, um, oh, you got inciting incidents. Okay, the internal motivation we're going to talk about in a second. Um, the internal motivation is kind of what you were planning out with, with that list of who your character is and what some of their what some of the things are that happened in their life, um, and hold on, I have I opened the um, this is why I keep changing. I opened up the chat to look at it, and it's now right in the middle of my screen, so I'm not seeing all of everything that I wrote. And I'm trying to move it, and every time I try to move it, I switch I switch um, screens. So inciting incident, what what changed? Um, so if, if you think about, there was a 
a movie several years ago, which um, called The Peacemaker, and it was Nicole Kidman and um, George Clooney. And it's a great example of romantic suspense. So that's obviously my jam. Um, and in the very beginning of the movie, as the credits are opening, you see Nicole Kidman and you know everything you need to know about her character. Her alarm goes off at five o'clock in the morning. She gets up, she goes somewhere uh, in the middle of the, you know, it's, it's dark, it's foggy. I think you get a sense that she's in Washington DC because maybe she drives by the Lincoln Memorial or Lincoln Monument, whatever, or Memorial. And then she gets into the swimming pool Nobody else is around and she starts swimming these laps and super and, and you kind of go back and forth with these two um, with these two scenes where she is um, where she's swimming and somebody's stealing a nuclear bomb and then you end up with a um, uh, you end up with a um, with her stopping as somebody with like military shiny shoes stands at the edge of the um, pool. So you had a, this moment of normalcy in Nicole Kidman's life. You can tell that, that this character is very driven, they're very disciplined, and, um, and they're important enough for somebody to find at six or you know, 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning and to be interrupted while they're trying to um, do their uh, workout. So, and then that inciting incident is when somebody comes and gives her the news that a nuclear bomb has been stolen. So, the ins so what you want in your story is a moment of your character having a normal life, and then it's interrupted by something, and that's the beginning of the conflict and they are they have to it's uh joseph campbell calls it the call to adventure so they have to go on this quest in order to fix whatever it was that is happening like whatever it was that was happening um and all stories keep this in mind especially genre fiction are driven by conflict so examples of inciting incident right if you remember alice in uh into the looking glass if you remember that i think that was the first one um but she's sitting there in the sun with her sister trying to teach her how to read and she has zero interest in her lessons and she sees this rabbit go into the rabbit hole and she decides to follow the rabbit into the rabbit hole that's the inciting incident that's where everything changes Katniss Everdeen, you have chapters of Katniss and the life that she lives, which, um, you know, like I found depressing reading, which I guess is probably the point. But um, what's her inciting incident? When she volunteers to take her little sister's place in the Hunger Game. Romeo and Juliet, if you, you know, remember, or if we have any Shakespeare fans out there, or if you remember having to read that back when you were in school, uh, Romeo and Juliet, when, um, when they fall in love at the at the ball right you have romeo or you have the fight in the market and and all this other stuff so you have these but but when they meet each other and they fall in love that's when everything changes uh with the hobbit gandalf arrives at uh bilbo baggins house i think he was painting his door or something like that before gandalf arrives the gandalf arrives and everything changes and again joseph campbell calls the inciting incident a call to adventure and it really is, you know, the hero is forced to go on this quest. It's not like with Bilbo Baggins, it's a little different. Like he, he chooses to go on the quest, but for everybody else, like there, the, you get that call to adventure and you're committed. Okay, so here's our internal motivation, sorry. So if we examine win a race, why, why does this kid wanna win a race, right? Is, are they like, do they have the super sports star sister and their father only, thinks that people are good if they're good at, at you know, physical activities. You know, there could be a, a cute girl that they want to date. Um, so why they want it is internal. And I went on about like it has to be met, like external goals have to be measurable. So external is 
uh, winning the race. Internal is proving yourself to your parent or, um, you know, wh whatever that is. So you want the internal and the external have to be tied to one another. The internal um, is what pushes the external forward. And the internal is based in your character's backstory. The external is doing, accomplishing the external goal is your story. The internal goal that makes that external goal so much more important comes from your character's backstory. Okay, so we do have one question if you want oh, to take sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. Um, does the inciting incident necessarily need to be in the beginning? Can there be time taken for character development first? Yes. So I, I see this now, Rebecca, and thank you, Rebecca, and thank you, Crystal. Um, they can, yeah, that's actually what I was saying with the, um, with the Nicole Kidman. You want, the, you want those, a moment of what is normal life for your character at the very beginning. So this is normal life because once the character is forced to go on a quest, the actual like honest to God goal is to solve the problem in order to go back to that moment of normalcy, right? Like it with Alice, all Alice wants to do is get out of Wonderland and go back to her boring old sister. And that's, so that's Alice's entire goal during her whole thing uh, or during her whole, um, the whole story. Um, so, so yes, did that answer your question, Rebecca? Okay, all right, uh, we have about 10 minutes. So um, let's go to, um, you creating your own character goal and statement. So there's gonna be four parts. Who is your character? What changes? So who's your character, right? That's like where, like age, gender, where they live, time period, place they live. What changes for them? That's the inciting incident. What do they want? External goal. Why do they want an internal goal? So here's Harry Potter. And I'm gonna say this is actually um harry potter's goal for the entire series seven book series um but this is also his goal for the sorcerer's stone and he and along the way if you look at the other books he ends up with other goals but overall this is his this is his overall series goal but it's definitely his goal for his first book so um Harry Potter, um, oops, okay, let's see, Rebecca. Okay, I, I was asked to go back. So well, just, just a quick note, we are recording this and the video will be available for everybody to review. Again, we'll be sending links out later if that helps. Okay, I, I think that does. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go forward here now. Um, Okay, so goal statement for Harry Potter. I'll read this. Harry Potter, a 10 year old orphan, has always felt different because of his unique and unwelcome talents. On his 11th birthday, he's admitted to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and learns that his parents were murdered by an evil wizard and that miraculously he survived the magical attack. Harry seeks to find out about the parents he never knew in order to make sense of his life. Does that make sense to everybody? So if we break this down, we have um, Harry Potter, a, a 10 year old boy has always felt different because of his unique and unwelcome talents. On his 11th birthday, he's admitted to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and learns that um, his parents were killed by an evil wizard and miraculously he survived the magical attack. What he wants, Harry seeks to find out about the parents he never knew. Why does he want it in order to make sense of his life? Um, goal statements. The best goal statements are gonna be two to three sentences and they are not um, the, the entire story, but just the essence. And this is, is I'm not gonna lie to you, it's kind of hard. It's in a lot of ways, it's easier to like write, you know, a five page, 
thing about your character, but you really want to know exactly what you're working with as you um, go forward. Okay, we have a five minute warning. And um, so I have, uh, I've been doing this writing for a few or for a few minutes, for a few, <laughs> a few years. Um, and I've come up with a few things that actually help me and I hope they can help you. So one thing I do er, is I write in blocks of time. Um, I, I, honest to God, I set a timer for 25 minutes. I sit down, I don't um, do research. I don't look at emails. I don't respond to texts, even though it makes my eye twitch. Um, and I just focus on my work for 25 minutes. I read an article somewhere that said like in our very media saturated world, the human brain can focus on tasks for about 25 minutes before starting to wander. So like put your butt in the chair for 25 minutes and use that to your advantage and just focus and get as much done. I take a, a 10 minute break. I go back for 25 minutes and look, I've worked for an hour. Okay. Stay active. Uh, writing a book is um, obviously mostly an intellectual and emotional experience but um sitting in a chair for hours upon hours a day is going to make your body hurt and the only way to uh combat that is to exercise so honestly like in my little 10 minute breaks oftentimes i will just go out and take a 10 minute walk um and um and or like join an exercise class um, and, and think about it this way, if you can't work, like if you can't sit in the chair because like it, it hurts too much, um, then you, you know, you aren't able to be productive. And so giving yourself an hour or whatever, a day maybe, or half an hour, even if you break it down is very good to, uh, keep you going. So the last one is it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert at everything, writing included. Now, um, like football, like if I practice football for 10,000 hours, I would be much better than I am now with my zero hours that I've ever practiced football in my life. It doesn't mean I'm going to be an NFL player because I think there's different, you know, like you need to not be 40 something and, uh, you know, five foot six and a woman to play in the NFL, but you, um, you have, uh, but writing is one of those things that if you work at, you can do and you, and you can do at a professional level, but it takes time. So I don't want to tell people 10,000 hours and make people freak out and go, oh my gosh, I don't have 10,000 hours. You're going to get better with every hour you put in. So, um, but so be gentle on yourself and don't like think, oh, I've, you know, written a book. Why am I not on the New York Times bestseller list? It's going to take you a while to develop as an artist, as a professional. And, um, and then the other thing is um, when your books come out, you kind of, I think it's easy to, to feel like you're, you know, giving birth, like your a book is released and man, it does, it does very much feel like you've given birth and sent your kid to kindergarten all in one day and off to college all in one day. And then, um, every, and then there's the fear that everybody who encounters your child is going to tell you what a horrible parent you were. So, but your book isn't your offspring, even though you have spent a lot of, you know, put a lot of your blood, sweat and tears into it. It's a product and this is a business. So think of it as like orange juice and not offspring. Think of it as like you want to, to offer your, your customer the best orange juice possible and not people didn't like your book and therefore they hate your child. And that, that has helped me a little bit with you know some reviews because not often, but people can get snarky. Okay, um, wear your masks, everybody. Let's uh, flatten the curve. Um, it's, it's been an honor to, to be here today. Thank you to Crystal for inviting me. Um, keep in touch with me on social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I have a website. I'd love to hear from you. And um, I guess there's a Discord. Uh, yes. Yep. We've got okay. a Discord channel for writers if you want to pop over there and continue the conversation or connect with each other. Um, and Jen, I know you dealt with some behind the scenes stuff while you were doing this. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much. You were yeah. fantastic. Oh, thank you. This was great fun. Um, 
And uh, I appreciate uh, coming here. I, I appreciate everybody um, showing up. And um, I don't know where, I, I don't know why I'm still not, ah, this is not working. Um, so uh, everybody have a great day and thank you so much.